Understanding Customer Requirements Using Quality Function Deployment Our topic today will be mainly separated into four categories which is the introduction, the theory, the case study, and finally the conclusion. Quality Function Deployment emphasizes on the need to focus. Why should it be implemented? To be able to make profit, a company has to be able to develop, manufacture, and sell products or services that meets customer expectation. And one of the proven approach to ensure that the customer's wants and needs are heard is by using quality function deployment tool. QFD is a tool that is sometimes referred to as voice of the customer or as the house of quality. A brief history of QFD is that it is developed in Japan in the mid-1970s and then introduced in USA in the late 1980s. Toyota was able to reduce 60% of the cost and also wanted of its development time to bring a new car model to market. It is used in cross-functional teams and companies feel that it increased customer satisfaction. What is QFD? QFD is a graphic method of expressing relationships between customer wants and design features. The collection of customer wants and expectations are expressed through surveys, focus groups, and interviews. The use of matrices is the key to the building of the house. The primary matrix is the relationship matrix between the customer needs or wants and the design features and requirement. How QFD works? So, QFD is building requirements into products. You input customer requirements into QFD and it outputs production procedures for producing a product that satisfies the customers. Here is an example of QFD implementation. So we can see that the company that is not using a QFD has a longer design changes, long, more design changes compared to a company that is using QFD. The theory is that the house of quality is a set of matrices which contains the requirement, what, and the detailed information of achieving those requirements, house and house much. The key to HOQ is making sure each group answers the same question about the same relationship, what versus how sell. So here is an example of a house of quality. The next key item to address in HOQ is the team mission statement. Who is the customer? What are the requirements? How important is each requirement? And how will you achieve each requirement? Then we complete the relationship matrix. Finally, we answer the last question, last three questions, which are which house are the most important? Which are the trade-offs between the house and what target values should be established? The QFD paradigm or the approach of QFD is that it makes sure you have a good product before you try to design and implement it. Eureka said in 1988 that QFD is about planning and problem prevention, not problem solving. QFD provides a systematic approach to identify which requirements are a priority to whom, when to implement them, and why implement them. So what does QFD require? It requires a full management support, a good team leadership and project management, and also a clear description of the output. For example, a QFD that can be effectively and efficiently applied to meet the desired objective, or also to meet the customer wants and needs. However, benefits are not realized immediately, usually not until later in the project or the next project, here is an example of a product without QFD and a product with QFD. I have finished my part. Now I will pass the presentation to Sunny Toh. Thank you. Thank you, Li Heng. My name is Sunny Toh. I will be presenting the theory of each step to construct the QFD. In total, there are eight steps. Firstly, before everything else, we need to know who are the customers. In most cases, there are more than one customer. That are consumers, regulatory agencies, manufacturing, and marketing. Customers should put in the first place because they drive the improvements. Step two is to determine the customer requirements. We need to determine which technical aspect of our product should be focused on. Customer more likely to focus on product reliability, durability, and appearance. They will also consider the technology and the feature involved in the product they purchase. 
For manufacturing, they will focus on product that is easy to produce, use ready available resource, standard component, and minimum waste. For marketing, they will focus on meeting customer requirement, the easiness to package, and whether it is suitable for display. Customer requirement can be broken down to different categories. Categories of consumer requirement are functional requirements, human factors, physical requirements, reliability, life cycle concerns, resource concerns, and manufacturing requirements. Next, we need to know how to determine the what. Customer surveys and also observing how the product are consumed by the customer is a good way of approaching the what. The data can then be combined with designer knowledge to determine what the customer truly desire in the products. Step 3 is to determine the relative importance of requirement between who versus what. The table below is taken from the case study that we shall discuss in part 3 of the presentations. It is not cost effective to improve a product overall. Therefore, we will have to evaluate the importance of each of the customer requirement. In order to do that, we use rank ordering to generate the waiving factor for each customer requirement. As shown in the table, it's best decrease the weight of the product compared to the speed. Step 4 is to identify and evaluate the competitions to understand how satisfied is our customer at this instance. The goal is to determine how the customer perceives the competition ability to meet each of the requirements. It creates awareness and reveals opportunity to improve of our current product. Marks are to be given from 1 to 5. Step 5 is to understand the engineering specifications on how will the customer requirement be met. The goal is to develop a set of engineering specifications from the customer requirement. This step is essential as it is a restatement of the problem with respect to the customer requirement in measurable aspect. Step 6 is to relate customer requirement to engineering specifications. This is the center portion of the house. Each cell represents the strength of the engineering parameter with respect to the customer requirement. 9 is strong relationship, 1 is weak relations, and 0 is totally zero relationships. Step 7 is to identify relationship between engineering requirement. Engineering specification may be dependent on each other. This part of determine how strong are the specification relate to each other. The box below represent the relations. Step at and also the final step, we will have a set of engineering target and identify how much is good enough. We evaluate the competitions, product and look at the customer we target in order to have a clear objective on how much should we improve our, our project. So, it is cost effective for the customer and the producer. I have finished presenting my parts. I will now pass to the presentation to Hong Chi Kang. Thank you, Sunny. I will be presenting the case study for the implementation of QFD. The case study we discussed today is about the analysis on laptop using QFD. In this case study, we will be going through all eight steps needed to construct QFD. The steps are as discussed in part 2 of the presentation. Each step will be presented in detail and analyzed. Our purpose is to improve the Lenovo ThinkPad X201i 3249J4C laptop. We are applying the quality function deployment by comparing laptops from Lenovo and Sony. The diagram shows the general shape of house of quality we are going to construct. We need to determine the parameters inside the hash queue before constructing it. Firstly, for step 1, we need to identify the customers we are going to target. Our consumer target are students entering university who does not need high computing requirement. Step 2, after identifying the customers, 
we'll need to determine the customer's requirement for the laptop. We found out that the requirements for customer satisfaction are mainly divided into three major categories speed, weight, and capacity. The three categories can then be further split into smaller parts, which is frequency and RAM size for the processing speed, material, dimension, and thickness of the laptop for the weight category, and hard disk for the capacity. In step 3, we need to determine the relative importance of the requirements. This step is done by listing down the technical specification of the Lenovo ThinkPad X201i, 3249J4C, and Sony X138JCP as listed on the official website. For step 4, we will need to identify and evaluate the competition, that is, how satisfied is the customer now. Survey forms are handed to customers using Lenovo and Sony laptop. The results are then summarized and tabulated as per below. We observe that the customer satisfaction level for Lenovo laptop is superior to Sony laptop in terms of speed and capacity, but lose out in terms of weight. In step 5, all the data obtained from the previous four steps are then filled in and the planning matrix is constructed. We observe that the standard increase rate needed for weight is higher compared to the others. Through that, the weightage for each category is then calculated and the final weight is obtained. In descending order from the highest weightage to the lower weightage, weight has a 42.6 weightage percentage, speed has 31.9 weightage percentage, and finally capacity has 25.5 weightage percentage. It is seen that weight should be prioritized when improving the laptop. For step 6, a relationship matrix is constructed between the customer requirements and the technical requirements. A circle with dots show a stronger relationship between the two aspects, speed with frequency, weight with material, and capacity with hard disk. Step 7 will then take all the data obtained for the previous step and put it into the structure so called the house of quality. The house dependent on each other, and the importance of each technical requirement is identified. In terms of importance in rank ordering, material should be given the most priority and memory should be least prioritized. For the last step, that is to set the engineering target. For the frequency aspect, the cost to advance it is relatively high. For the memory, since we are already, already on par with, with our rivals, further improvement will not generate more value in terms of customer satisfaction. The material for laptop will cost a higher value for the better technology, so it is hard to improve in a limited time. On the other hand, the size and thickness have a great influence on the weight of laptop and its cost is relatively low. The expense on hard disk research is also low. Therefore, we decided to improve these three technical aspects of the laptop that will generate the most customer satisfaction per value. I will now pass the presentation to Telly Heng for the conclusion. Thank you, Hong Chi Kang. In conclusion, we see that QFD is a good system to be implemented in organization or industry. It is used to support the organization's design process. It brings the customer's voice into the production process to reduce the unnecessary costs and also cut production time. However, QFD has not been widely accepted in the USA compared to Japan. In the future, we hope that QFD can be more adopted and researched in the American manufacturing and service organizations. Thank you.